always look yeah, at you. I think it'll be kind of um, easier for you. Okay. I hate looking at the camera when I speak, so. Sure, okay. <laughs> All right, Alex, so thank you very much for giving us your precious time. Um, mm. Just Can we just start uh, by telling our viewers who you are, what you mm -hmm. do, and why we were so kind of happy to trace you down <laughs> to the conference sure. for okay. the interview? So, uh, three years ago now, 2012, um, I won a competition by Harper Collins, the publishers. Uh, which was trying to find Britain's most multilingual student. So I was tested for fluency in 11 different languages by native speakers and I was given the prize. Um, and back then I was studying German and Russian at Oxford. Um, I've since left Oxford. I'm now living in Budapest where I'm learning Hungary and teaching English, German and Russian. Wow, so many languages. Yeah. <laughs> Why are so, so many? Some people have problems with one. Yeah, I mean, it's a number of different things. I think, uh, first of all, each of the languages that I've learned, I've always had a reason to learn them. There's always been a way to use them, uh, which means that in addition to just learning them, I've also been able to practice them, which has been really important. And I've had the motivation to take them to a high level and imagine how I'd like to use them. But then beyond that, that just turns into a big passion, a big hobby, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think um, once you've got the bug, it really stays with you and you just want to mm -hmm. learn more and more. Yeah, you said that you had a reason, but with Hungarian, I don't believe that there was a really special reason no. to learn Hungarian. <laughs> <laughs> Hungarian's where we start to go into the stratosphere a little bit. Um, I decided I wanted to, to go live in Budapest, experience living abroad, and I think Hungarians come from that, really. All right. So I've created the reason. Oh, uh, you've created <laughs> it's, the reason. It's a, not a natural okay. reason, yeah. All right, but a lot of people can't speak English, for example. They decide mm -hmm. that they want to learn English, and when they don't know any, they just decide to go to Great Britain and learn it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a good idea to do it? Um, I think there's a lot of challenges that come with just going to the country. I've certainly experienced in Hungary that if you don't speak the language, you're more likely to hang around with people who speak your mother tongue, you're going to be in expat circles a lot, and when you're doing that, you're not going to be practicing the language that you've set out to learn. I think if you want to go and spend time in a foreign country, the ideal time to go is after maybe a year of studying the language, where you're at kind of quite a confident level with what you can do, and you can speak quite well about a lot of different topics, and then you'll really benefit from being surrounded by the language. Mm -hmm. Oh, so when you decided to learn Hungarian, what mm -hmm. was the first thing you did? Because it was a kind of crazy, probably, yeah. idea for such a specific language mm -hmm. to start. Um, well, the very first step um, that I took was to make sure that I liked the language. Uh, uh -huh. So I downloaded some free podcasts, I listened to some videos on YouTube and that kind of thing to make sure I liked the sound, I was interested in the words, and that really started from there. Then I was concentrating a lot on pronunciation, making sure that when I was learning new words, I was learning to say them correctly. And then gradually starting to learn more words, more vocabulary, just so things that I could imagine myself in Hungary, looking around, pointing at something and being able to say what it is in Hungarian. Mm -hmm. All right, so how did you learn? How did you learn vocabulary, for example? Mm -hmm. um, I used um, a couple of courses. Uh, the one that I used especially was Colloquial Hungarian by Routledge. Um, I also uh, did a lot of vocabulary with uh, the lists that are available on Memrise for Hungarian. Mm -hmm. Um, and basically I managed to keep up a routine of doing about an hour a day, uh, split up into chunks of 15 minutes each, spread out around the day. So it never felt like a really big burden learning the language. It always felt very, um, it felt very doable. It never felt like I was um, having to give up doing anything else to do it. And, you know, I think that also really helped. All right, so what do you think the, the, are the most common mistakes that people make when they learn a foreign language? Um, one thing that I see a lot is uh, people set the bar too high for themselves, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we have to learn to crawl before we can walk, as mm -hmm. we say in English and a couple of other languages, I guess, as well. Um, one thing that I see with my own students is that uh, they get very frustrated that they can't express themselves in exactly the way they want to in the language they're learning. You know, because they're so fluent in English, or whatever their native tongue is, that when it comes to speaking this new language, all of a sudden, okay, I can't quite say that, I can't be so exact. And once you make peace with that idea, once you understand that in this new language you're learning, it's going to take time before you can be as precise as you'd like to be in English, you can start making a lot of progress too, once you learn how to talk around things that you want to say. Do you need to have a teacher to learn a language, or can you do it by yourself? Well, it depends what you want to achieve with the language. If you just want to read the language, then no, uh, you probably don't need a teacher. But I think if you want to speak, it makes sense to get some practice in. Um, a teacher can, I mean, apart from giving you practice with speaking, practice with pronunciation, what a teacher and a course really does is it gives you structure. 
to make sure that even when you have moments where you're not so motivated or you feel, okay, I don't want to get out of bed today, you have to, you know, and that's quite useful because we're all human and sometimes it does all break down. Mm -hmm. Do you look for language partners when you learn? Do you try to um, connect? I've actually written an article recently on my blog about this issue. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried a few language exchanges, but I often find they don't last very long time because, mm -hmm. you know, life gets in the way and things just fall apart and you're very dependent on another person. So uh, actually, I now just choose to find a teacher online on Skype and pay them for their time to correct my language. Uh, do you use any technology? Uh, I mean, any applications about, uh, apart from Memrise that you've mm -hmm. uh, mentioned? Um, well, I have a couple of online dictionaries that I use. Um, there's the Pons, of course, which is the big German dictionary, but also does a couple of other languages too. Uh, I really like that one. I think it's really, really clear. And um, apart from that, obviously Skype is the piece of technology I use more than anything to connect with language learners around the world. Mm -hmm. All right, some people struggle with uh, not being native like mm -hmm. speaker of uh, the target language. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Um, I mean, look, if you look at this practically, you've been learning your native language ever since you were born. So you're always going to be better at that than at whatever language you're learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, but once you've um, made peace with that idea, um, you can get back to thinking about what you really can achieve um, with these new languages that you're learning, which is actually a pretty inspiring level. I know a lot of people who, um, in languages that they've learnt, you know, much later in life, even, you know, in their 40s and 50s, they've managed to achieve a really, really good level in quite a short amount of time, just by, you know, being consistent in their studying, having clear goals and, um, you know, really thinking carefully about which languages they'd like to learn and which languages they'll be able to use. Mm -hmm. And what do you do in order not to lose any of the languages that you already have? Mm -hmm. um, well, there's a number of things you can do. I mean, um, for example, if you can get hold of TV in um, that language, that's a really nice exercise to sit and watch a half hour documentary about something that interests you and mm -hmm. write down some words on the side that are new, new expressions that you like, things you wouldn't have necessarily said yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and then maybe even if you want to be really proactive about it, record yourself talking for five minutes, summarizing. Uh, what you've just watched and trying to use the new vocabulary that you've written down. Um, but generally, I mean, the more languages that you are learning, if that's what you want to do, this can get harder and harder. So generally, I don't always get to practice all my languages at the same time. I have a set few that I'm using at a particular time of my life, and then the others I have to kind of, you know, put to the back of my mind for a while. But then when I need them, you know, often I can revitalize them and bring them back. I know that you're involved in workshops uh, mm -hmm. for foreign class for uh, students or people who learn languages. Yeah. Can you tell us more about it? Absolutely. So the workshops are really, really good fun. Uh, we normally get quite small groups of people, so very different. Uh, there's a very different feel to these kind of events where you have 350 people. At our events, we have like 20. Mm -hmm. uh, we spend a whole weekend together. We're sharing our experiences. Uh, we're teaching techniques about learning vocabulary and basically trying to give you the right mindset, thinking about how you can go about learning a new language the most efficient way. Uh, we were actually in Poland in March, in Poznań and in Warsaw, and we're going to be in Budapest at the end of May on the 30th. Okay, so, um, so uh, who, who is this for? Is it for mm -hmm. students? Is it for polyglots? It's for everybody who's interested in learning languages. I think uh, what's really nice about it is that we've had some people who have learned a lot of languages, and we've had some people who've only learned one language, or maybe even half a language, you know? Oh. Everyone comes with completely different perspectives and experiences, and everybody leaves having learned something, you know? Some people just come because they want to practice their English, and All it's right. a good opportunity. Great, so thank you very much for uh, the talk.